Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. The story begins as the popular kids at school make their cliche walk through the hallways as everyone gossips about them. Susan A is the student council president superstar, and some certified nerd named Kazuki is her little sidekick that's also the vice president. Some people just turn out to be the center of attention, but our average Joe ordinary protagonist doesn't consider himself one of these people. His name is Usado, and this self-hating guy just thinks of himself as a forgettable run-of-the-mill high school student. The most exciting adventure in this dude's vanilla-flavored life is returning some dumb pigeon babies to their nest. Deep down though, Usado is always hoping for an extraordinary life. Luckily for him, he is the protagonist of this anime. For now though, it's raining and Usado doesn't have an umbrella. Usado's evil side shows itself for a second as he contemplates taking someone else's, but this typical good guy decides against it, fearing the beginning of a life of crime over a $5 umbrella. This proves to be a pretty stupid decision though, as he ends up waiting for hours. Susan A appears out of nowhere and explains that all students are required to leave. This guy really is forgettable as he decides to just run home in the rain, but Susan A stops him. It would look bad for the student council to just watch him get soaked in the rain like a loser, so Kazuki arrives and lends him his spare umbrella. Usado was certain that Kazuki didn't even know of his useless existence and is even more surprised when Kazuki seems to be a nice guy. They offer to all walk home together and Suzune points out that it must be fate that they met. Usado's nerdy mind goes right to video games as he thinks of this moment as suddenly hitting a walking home with two of the most popular kids at school event. He almost ruins this marvelous moment as he says that everyone in school will be jealous, but luckily they didn't hear his utterly embarrassing comment. On their little walk, Usado tells Kazuki that he didn't expect him to be so nice because he only ever sees this playboy rizzing up the ladies. Kazuki only talks to the girls out of pity, and Suzune roasts him by saying that he likes talking to boys better anyway. Suzune is even more unapproachable for our shy protagonist though, as she is the top of her class in all subjects, and great at all sports. Usado glazes her up even more, and points out that she's also beautiful inside and out. Usado, acting like some kind of dumb gossip news reporter, finally comes out and asks if they are dating, since everyone at school talks about it. The walk gets pretty awkward, but they explain that they only spend so much time together because they are on the student council. Usado apologizes for the incredibly stupid question that he definitely should not have asked, but Suzane doesn't mind since it's better than talking behind their back. Their incredibly snooze-inducing conversation continues as the three then talk about what they will do when they graduate. None of these dummies have a plan yet though. Suzune is already a third year, but she has a huge problem. She still hasn't found what she wants to do, and she immediately completes any goal she sets for herself. Seemingly foreshadowing what's about to happen, Suzune explains that she feels like she doesn't belong in this world, and Usado is shocked. The two of them are totally opposite people, but he understands that feeling. This boring conversation has me wishing that truck -kun would pay them a visit as well, but they all stop when the two student council members hear bells ringing. The ringing gets louder and louder, but Usado doesn't hear a single thing. Just as Usado approaches the others, a magic circle appears on the ground, and he wonders if it's a gate to another world. Instead of being terrified, Suzune looks like a psycho and wonders if Usado thinks they will find magic monsters and heroes in this other world. Usado is shocked that she's into that kind of stuff, but time is up and they are taken away. Usado eventually wakes up and finds that they are sitting in front of a king. The boys are rightfully terrified and cautious, but something is wrong with Suzune's brain as she only feels excitement. King Jerkwad has the most basic name ever and introduces himself as Lloyd. Kazuki wants to skip the introductions though and demands to know why Lloyd brought them there. Lloyd keeps his hot-headed guard from slicing Kazuki into pieces for his disrespect and reveals that he is king, as if that wasn't painfully obvious already. The kids are still shocked by this, except for Suzune who is having the time of her life. Lloyd then reveals that they were summoned to be heroes, making all of Suzune's dreams come true. Two years ago, this world was attacked by the King of Demons and his army. They managed to drive them off, but the Demon Lord's power has been growing. As a last resort, they called forth accomplished individuals from another world who can confront the Demon Lord using a forbidden ritual known as Hero Summoning. Usado tries to remind the excited Suzune that they are having a serious conversation and Kazuki goes all crazy. He doesn't care about heroes or Demon Lords and is just furious that they were summoned without consent. He refuses to be isekai since he is not the protagonist and demands that they get sent back to their world. Unfortunately for this side character, the hero summoning only works in one direction, so they can't go back. Kazuki still wants to go back to rizzing up all the ladies back home, but the king apologizes as they are desperate for help. 
Kazuki's whining marathon pushes the guards to finally quiet him down by threatening to turn him from a side character to a non-existent one. Usado calms the hothead down and the king shockingly bows before them. He promises to find them a way back eventually, but begs that these heroes help him in the meantime. Suzuni finally stops fangirling over being isekai'd and wonders why the king calls them heroes without knowing anything about them. Some little dork named Welchi explains that the hero summoning is designed to select accomplished individuals. She explains that hearing the bells ring before being summoned indicates that they are heroes. That's actually some pretty bad news for our boy Usado though, as he was the only one that didn't hear ringing and he wonders if he was brought by accident. Wedgie then takes them to a crystal ball that measures their magical abilities. Kazuki wonders if Usado's really okay with this, but our boy's just fine since Welchi told him that he might be able to use magic even though he isn't a hero. Kazuki thinks Usado should be more upset, but our boy isn't a whiny little dweeb like him, and he points out that they should try to be like the overly excited Suzune. She is the first to be tested, and the color of the crystal indicates her affinity for thunder magic. As if that weren't amazing enough, she also has a ton of mana. Suzune couldn't be any happier, and it is now Kazuki's turn. This guy barely touches the thing, and Wedgie is amazed when the crystal turns white. It's light magic, and Suzune is certain that it means he can shoot laser beams out of his eyes, or even better, he might be able to use swords made of light. Usado points out that Kazuki isn't a weeb like her and probably has no clue what she is talking about, but she scolds him for having a sharp tongue. Suzune realizes that she likes his tongue that way, and Usado's perfect image of Suzune is getting ruined every time she talks. Well, she explains that light magic is incredibly rare and few people can use it. Light repels evil, so its power is unparalleled against demons. The bar has been set pretty high by the first two, but now it's our protagonist's turn. Usado hopes that he will at least have the tiniest bit of power, as this humble kid just hopes to help Suzune and Kazuki any way he can. He is glad when his crystal actually changes color, and everyone thinks it's a soothing color. A look at Welchi though paints a totally different picture, as she is shocked by this color change, and instantly drags Usado away without saying a single thing. Welchi urgently takes him to the king, and explains that the other two have great abilities. However, she is there about something more important. The king has a good chuckle as he jokes about Usado having an affinity for dark magic, but this doofus is shut up when Welchi reveals that the crystal ball turned green. The guards are even shocked and Welchi begins to finally say what that means. King Lloyd stops her though as he doesn't even want her to utter those words and Usado begins to wonder if his magic affinity is really that bad. Our boy just has to remain confused though as the king quickly demands that Usado be taken away from the castle as quickly as possible. They try to think of the safest place to send him, and Usado wonders if he's really that dangerous. He asks if anyone else has the same magic, and there just so happens to be another person. It's a certain girl, but the king doesn't even want her name to be spoken. Unfortunately for King Coward, this girl barges in. Everyone is terrified beyond belief, as we find out that her name is Rose, and she wants to know if the heroes have been summoned. The king was really hoping that she took the day off, but Rose would never do such a thing. She questions if Usado is a hero, but King Lloyd explains that he's just some nerd that got teleported there by accident. This guy desperately tries to hide the truth and tells her that Usado is super ordinary. Rose introduces herself to Usado as the captain of the kingdom's rescue team, but our boy feels that this angry chick is more like the type to take lives, not save them. Wedgie might be a genius because she diffuses the situation and offers to take Rose to the real heroes in the crystal room. Unfortunately, Usado's an idiot that can't read the room and asks the king what his green color crystal meant. Rose is still in hearing distance, so everyone is terrified by what's about to happen. Usado confirms that his ball is green, and Rose tells the king that she will be borrowing the boy. The king decides that he must act quickly and urgently tells Welchi to get Usado away from her. Wedgie uses some kind of bubble magic to quickly get him out of there, but Rose instantly takes off after him. Welchi sends our non-hero sky high, but Rose is able to get to him almost immediately. She is crazy powerful as she destroys the bubble and rapidly captures Usado. Everyone is left with their mouths open from shock like a bunch of guppy fish, and Rose tells the king that she will turn the boy into a full-fledged healing magic user. Wedgie can't handle what will happen moving forward so she faints, and the king begs Rose to stop. He knows that she has been searching for other healing magic users, but he tries to explain that Usado was really dragged into this by accident. His useless words go completely ignored as the two are already gone. Back in the castle, Usado's useless new friends have just been sitting on their stupid hands this entire time, but are shocked to hear that Usado was taken away. 
Well, G explains that his life is not going to be ended, but it's still really bad news. He was taken to the rescue team just beyond the castle town. Healing magic users are extremely rare, and the crazy lady that took him is one of them. She intends to train Usado as her subordinate. No matter how hard Suzune uses her dumb brain, she can't see how this is a problem. Luckily, Wedgie explains it to her like she is a toddler, and reveals that Rose's training methods are extremely unorthodox. At her base, Rose explains that Usado only has the potential to become a healing magic user, so that is why she brought him to the rescue team. This will be his home, and she calls on her boys. Usado is terrified by these extreme dudes, and Rose tells them that they will be looking after him. She tells them to play nice, but these guys look like lunatics and introduce themselves. Usado fears the worst in every possible situation, as he wonders if he's actually some kind of offering, and he is being sacrificed to these monsters. Rose tells them not to scare Usado, but she is the most terrifying of all. The boys try to explain that this is them being nice, but Usado doesn't think these brutes know what being nice means. Rose explains that while these meatheads are her subordinates, they are not healing magic users. There are two other healing magic users on the rescue team, but they usually work elsewhere. It's time to get to business, so Rose explains that she will beat the knowledge on how to use healing magic deep into his tiny little brain. Usado seems to be in a permanent state of disbelief, as every fiber of his being is telling him to stay away from this insane person. Usado uses his Sunday morning church voice to ask if he could learn from another teacher, but Rose ignores the nerd and tells him that training starts tomorrow. She tells the brute named Tong to let Usado stay in his room, and instructs them to eat dinner before getting rest. These guys hit Usado with the brutal reality once she leaves, as they tell him that he is screwed. Rose will be training him herself, and she's going to put him through hell. They say hell might be the least of his worries, and the meatheads have a good laugh at our non-hero's expense. That night, Usado wonders what will happen to him, but he finally shows a bit of optimism, as he is certain that things will be okay. He might be wrong, however, as we see that not even Rose knows what will happen. When Usado wakes up, he explains that he was hoping it was all a dream. Unfortunately, it's not, and he really is in another world. Suzune and Kazuki arrive to visit him, as they heard he was abducted. Usado tells them not to worry, but he has PTSD from the day before, and he gets real depressed when he remembers that he will be starting the training from hell today. He is determined to go through with it though, since he wants to make himself useful. Suzune explains that they will begin their training as well, and they all decide to do their best. When they leave, Usado feels a bit bad for them being thrown into this situation, but quickly remembers that Suzune is having the time of her life. Regardless, Usado just hopes to grow strong enough to support the two heroes one day. Miss Rose startles our boy, but she points out that this isn't a prison, and he can see whoever he wishes. However, that only applies to when he is not training. She gives him a journal so he can record his daily training regimen and how he feels about it. They will have breakfast first, and Usado can't believe that the training from hell will really be starting now. After breakfast, training begins, but Usado doesn't think it's actually that bad. Rose just has him feel the mana in his body and tells him to work on drawing it out. For now, he needs to perfect sensing it, so she has him do some reading. Usado is shocked to see that he can read the language of this world, and it's because summoned heroes automatically have translation magic cast on them. Rose shows how close the demon territory is to the kingdom, and explains that this is why they are always the demon's first target. This book has a bunch of information about the demons and other races in this world, so she leaves him to do some studying. The first day of training seemed quite easy, so he is sure that he will be able to handle it. Day 2 of training is much more different than he expected. It's a lot of running and he wonders if this is really what magic training is all about. On day 3, Usado is forced to run until his muscles are so sore that he can't move. He eventually collapses, but Rose wonders what he thinks he's doing. Usado explains that his legs won't move anymore, but she gives him a good smack and he's shocked to realize that she healed his sore muscles. Rose keeps the intensity up by calling our boy trash, and she commands him to continue running. She tells him to run like he's going to die, and she will revive him so he can keep running. Usado knows he can't tell her how crazy she sounds, so he plans to write it in his journal. On day 4, Usado begins training with the other members, but he ends up falling behind by an entire lap. Everyone trash talks him for falling behind, but he can't talk back, so he decides that he will have to write it in his journal. Day 5 and 6 was more running, with Rose berating him. Usado's anger was building inside him, and he once again planned to give Rose hell in his journal. Just then, Usado was shocked to see the light of healing magic on his hand. 
Training is pretty tough, but not enough to need healing, so it goes away. On day 7, Usado ran until he thought he would die again, and Rose beat him up. She seems more angry than usual, so Usado wonders if she found out that he was dissing her in his journal. He realizes that she can't read Japanese, and wonders if she can just tell by the look on his face that he talks smack in his little diary. Rose launches him into the sky so he can start running again, and Usado vows to call her a vicious gorilla in his journal. Day 8 is more of the same, but on day 9, Usado realizes the need to heal himself. He is surprised to see that he managed to heal his entire body instead of just the part that hurt. Usado realizes that he was wrong about healing magic, and he in fact really, really does need it. On day 10, Usado explains that he doesn't get tired anymore, no matter how much he runs, since he can now manifest healing magic on command. He eventually gets concerned, however, as all he has been doing is running. Usado questions if he will be able to help his friends at this rate, but he knows that Rose would just punch him right in his stupid face if he tried to voice his concerns to her. Rose is upset anyway and gives Usado another 30 laps to run. Usado decides in his mind to no longer call her Miss Rose, as she doesn't deserve any more than just being called Rose. On day 11, the training regimen gets a new addition, push-ups. Usado gets all the way up into the 800s, and Rose finally reveals why Usado is training this way. It's so he can run from his enemies as quickly as possible in battle. This way, he can save his injured allies. She explains that the faster he runs, the faster he can save them. On day 12, he ran until noon, and then did push-ups into the night. On day 13, Rose caught on to the fact that Usado was starting to feel lighter, so she added weights. On day 14, Usado's lunch goes missing, and one of the meatheads admits to eating it. Usado loses his cool and finally strikes back. He has already gotten used to the weights, and he is finally starting to get the hang of training. A week later, Usado's friends come to visit him, and they're shocked to see just how much he has changed in such a short time. This kid is doing some really intense push-ups, and Rose is telling him not to whine about doing something so easy. Usado actually doesn't whine one bit, and even goes as far as to say that doing push-ups with her on his back is easy, because she is so light. Rose is amused by his riz, and tosses another stone on his back. Usado is extremely determined, so his body heals, and he's able to complete the push-up. Rose is pleased with his progress, and determines that she will be able to take him to a certain place sooner than she thought. Suzune is amazed with our boy's newly developed muscles, and Kazuki acknowledges just how brutal the training is. Some dude named Siglis is furious with Rose though, as he thinks that she is destroying Usado. Rose tells him that she does things much differently than the knights do, and she's turning Usado into her right hand man. She needs him to train hard, since it will be a problem if he can't even handle this. Usado is surprised to hear that she wants him as her right hand man, and she explains that it's because she likes how he just can't stand to lose. He never gives up, and most importantly, he has been able to survive her training. Usado realizes that him wanting to teach her a lesson has backfired in the worst way, and Rose tells him to take a break. The friends are told to go with some chick named Celia to take a break, and Siglis tells Rose that he was ordered to re-enlist her. He refuses to do it now though, but Rose says it doesn't matter anyway since her right eye is totally useless. At their lunch break, Usado learns that Siglis commands the kingdom's army. He is the strongest knight in the kingdom, and he is the one teaching Usado's friends how to sword fight. Usado just now realizes that Celia is the princess, and apologizes for behaving so casually. They enjoy some kind of pie thing, and Kazuki wonders if Usado really does that type of training every day. Usado tells him that today was different, but that's only because today was easier. Kazuki explains that their training is going well, but it's not nearly as tough as Usado's. Suzune has lost her mind apparently, as she interrupts their conversation to take a look at Usado's muscles. This dude is seriously shredded now, but Kazuki settles things down by asking if the training isn't too tough for Usado. Usado admits that it's extremely tough, and he wanted to run away at first. Rose is just as scary as ever, but he doesn't want to run anymore. The training is actually starting to get fun for him, and he has realized that life there isn't that bad. Usado's friends think he is amazing, but he just explains that what he is is stubborn. The two of them will have to fight one day, so he wants to be able to support them. They all joke around about how Suzune is a weirdo, and the big guy that ate Usado's lunch has made a meal to replace it. Usado clearly still has a grudge, as he begins to talk just like all the other meatheads, and they begin to argue. Usado is a real hothead now, as the argument quickly turns into a fight, and the big guy promises to knock our boy out. Usado would like to see him try, and they both start throwing hands. Celia wonders if it's okay to just watch, 
and Kazuki tells her that it's fine, since this seems to just be a part of Usado's daily life now. Usado has clearly acclimated very quickly, so Kazuki decides that he needs to go back to training so he doesn't get left behind. Suzune prepares to go as well, but realizes now that all three of them must have been brought to this world for a reason. That night, Usado enjoys a bath and thinks about how he needs to control his riz better so Suzune doesn't lose her composure again. Usado realizes though that she is right, his body has changed dramatically. He has been healing his muscles over and over again after damaging them from this strenuous exercise. The result is that he has gotten shredded. However, his job will be to rescue people on the battlefield and he questions if he has the mental fortitude to match the body he has built. The next morning, Rose informs Usado that they will be going out and the other guys seem worried that this day has come. A guard at the gate nearly wets himself as Rose informs him that she wants to show her subordinate the outside world. He runs off to open the gate for her and Usado thinks about how all she has to do is stand there to scare someone. Outside the gate, Usado wants to know where they are going, but Rose tells him to keep his mouth shut and follow her. They eventually arrive at the forest known as the Darkness of Linger. It's infamous for being filled with monsters and she shockingly tells Usado not to come back until he has hunted down a grand grizzly. Usado thinks there has been a misunderstanding as he reminds her that blue grizzlies only turned into grand grizzlies after living for a hundred years. The book he read even said that just the blue grizzlies are extremely dangerous. Rose explains that he should be able to take one down easily, but Usado points out that he has only been running this entire time and has no idea how to fight. Rose doesn't give a single word of explanation though and just launches him towards the forest. Thanks for watching my recap. Sign up to my free newsletter if you want to show some support to the channel. Link is in the description.